Hey, Steve here, and in this video I'm sharing three proven methods to increase image contrast in Photoshop. However, this is more than just those three methods, and you know, this isn't just going to be another contrast technique tutorial. What I really want to share is the concept of using whatever contrast technique that it is that you like to use to work two different types of contrast. And what I mean by that is I like to file contrast adjustments in Photoshop into one of two groups micro contrast and macro contrast and so that's what we're going to get into now it's worth noting that many of these adjustments that i'm about to show you can be further fine-tuned by masking them in or out of whatever image you're working on that's a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial so i'll put some links to some of my layer masking videos on youtube in the description below and if you want to see how all of these uh, seemingly random photoshop tips and techniques fit together to create a seamless and consistent editing workflow for me. And it's one that I've taught to uh, you know many people online. And I think we're well over 50,000 photographers who have downloaded this so far, but I'll put a link for any of you who uh, haven't downloaded it before to my six stage processing workflow for landscape photographers in the description where you can get it for free. And finally, before we start, let me know in the comments if this video gives you some new ways to think about how to apply contrast in your images or if you want me to uh, go a little bit deeper perhaps in an upcoming video. So here we are in Photoshop and we're going to start with micro contrast. So the reason I call it micro contrast is because, you know, this is like the regular sort of, you know, using adjustment layers to add contrast to your image. And for example, let's use a curves adjustment this time. Uh, and the reason I call it micro contrast is because let's add a, a typical S curve to the image. And now let's zoom in really close into the detail to see exactly what's going on. So this rock in the middle of the image has got bright parts and it's got darker parts. So when you create an S curve like this, what's happening in the image is that the bright bits are getting brighter, the dark bits are getting darker. And you know that's what's creating the extra contrast. So no matter how fine the detail is, uh, you know, if there's one pixel that's darker and it's next to a, another single pixel that's brighter, then the brighter gets bright, the darker gets dark, and it's increasing the contrast on a micro level, on a pixel by pixel level. So that's why I call this micro contrast, even though, you know, it's kind of affecting the whole image, it's actually affecting the finest, finest details all around the whole image. So these micro contrast adjustments can be masked in or out using layer masks. But as I mentioned before, uh, you know, we won't get into that exactly today. I've got some videos in the description that can talk to you about uh, layer masking if that's new to you, if you haven't used it before. Um, but yeah, whether you use a curves adjustment or another one that I like to use quite regularly is a levels adjustment. Uh, you can add contrast this way by you know, moving uh, these control points closer to each other. Uh, to increase the contrast in the you know all around the image uh, so yeah really just to repeat even though it's like a large scale adjustment it really is a micro contrast adjustment because it's adjusting and adding contrast to the finest details in the uh, in the frame in the image so that is opposed to macro contrast so this is um, an idea i mean i'm guessing you probably added contrast to your images in much the same as what I've just shown you with these levels and curves adjustments. Um, now macro contrast is a bit different. So the reason I call it macro is because it's not um, it's not sort of fine tuning the contrast on that micro level detail. What it's doing, and let me just run through while I uh, talk you through this, um, is you know, you, you're going to pick an object. So say, for example, this large rock in the center of the frame. And we're going to manually brighten one side of it and then manually darken the other side of it. So it's looking at the object as a whole, hence macro. So let's do that now. Uh, so let's add a curves adjustment. Now, instead of adding an S curve to actually increase contrast, we're going to do these, uh, well, we're going to use two separate adjustments. So one to brighten and one to darken. So let's increase the brightness here. Um, and let's add another curves adjustment, which is going to darken here. So we probably end up, you know, similar brightness all over. 
uh, if I disable these two layers and re-enable them. Uh, those curves aren't quite the perfect opposite of each other, so it's a little bit different. But what we're going to do is um, let's rename this one just so that we can see exactly what's going on. Let's call this light and let's call this one dark. And we're going to invert the layer mask first. So actually I said that we're not going to get into layer masking, but I forgot that we are going to do a bit here. Um, so let me invert the mask, Command or Control I, and then on the light, Command or Control I. So the layer masks are black. These two adjustments are perfectly hidden. So what we're going to do is take a white brush now. Uh, let's grab the brush tool. About 30% opacity is usually a good ballpark for your brush. And we are going to brush into the light adjustment to brighten the light side. So just gradually revealing this lightening curve. And then, yeah, I'm running through this a bit quicker than I normally would if I was processing and taking my time a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, I do respect your time, so I don't want to sit here forever making fine-tuned adjustments uh, when, you know, I can show you the general idea and you can go and uh, take as long as you need to actually use these techniques. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here with the dark adjustment is just darkening the dark edge. So let's just give that a bit more. So we're darkening the dark edge and brightening the bright edge. So when we look at these two adjustments as a whole, you know, together, here's the less contrasty view of this rock, this one object. And now here is the higher contrast version. And the reason I do it this way is because this is what helps particular object to really stand out in your images. So, you know, if you're working on an image that's got quite a busy foreground or background and there's one object that you want to make stand out from that, you can use this technique. And, you know, I generally like to use this technique if there is like one main subject in the center of the frame just to really make it pop. Um, but yeah, let me zoom out a little bit. I like also, if you haven't seen many of my previous videos, um, yeah, I like also to zoom out so that the image appears really small uh, and then kind of toggle the adjustments off and on because for some reason when it's small it gives you a, a better idea of uh, exactly what's going on. Um, but yeah, there we go. That is an example of a, uh, a macro contrast adjustment. So it's using a number of different adjustments, one for lighting or lightening and one for darkening. Uh, and then using those to manually brush light or darkness onto one single object. So um, yeah, that covers two types of contrast adjustment. And really, you know, the title of this, this video is uh, three proven methods. Um, so really, I'm just going to throw in here a third, uh, which I think, you know, when we're talking about contrast, um, this deserves to get uh, mentioned because it's not normally thought of as a contrast adjustment but it really is. Uh, it's just coming with some extra stuff that helps add a lot of color as well as contrast at the same time. And what I'm talking about is an Autumn Effect layer. So uh, let me just run through the steps to create an Autumn Effect and I'll show you what this all means. So what we need to do is select the whole canvas. So select all, edit, copy merged, and then edit paste. And what that's going to give us is a new layer on top, which is basically a merged copy of everything that's, uh, you know, that's visible on the image so far. Now we need to run the Gaussian blur filter. So roughly 15 pixels on the radius here is a good amount generally. So we're going to blur the image and then we're going to change the blend mode to soft light. So the effect here is quite strong, so we can pull the opacity back or we could mask it out. It's your choice really, uh, you know, when you come to use this yourself. Um, and that's it. But yeah, notice if I leave this actually a bit stronger, a bit too strong, but it will kind of show, uh, you know, it'll prove the point really that I'm trying to say. Um, you can see when I toggle this off and on why this is technically a contrast adjustment because the dark parts are getting dark and the lighter parts are getting lighter. Um, however, you know, like I said, it's not generally thought of as a contrast adjustment, but because we are using uh, a blend mode here of soft light, which is 
a contrast blend mode, then that's exactly what's going on. And so that wraps this video up really. Um, yeah, hopefully the idea of micro and macro contrast, if this is a new concept to you, hopefully it's going to help you think about contrast in slightly different ways uh, so that you can get some really great results in Photoshop. So like I said, if, uh, if you do, then let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear. In the meantime, I'll uh, sign this video off and say thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.